Here we're told we have air flowing through a frictionless adiabatic converging diverging nozzle. So let's sketch that out. So here's our converging diverging nozzle. Air is going through it. It's, since we're told that it's uh, frictionless and adiabatic, that implies that the flow is isentropic. So we have isentropic flow through this nozzle. Uh, we're told that air in the reservoir feeding the nozzle has a pressure and temperature that are given. So that's the stagnation pressure and temperature. So 700 kilopascals absolute and 500 Kelvin. Uh, and I know that because it says it's a reservoir, so that means it's a large tank, which means it's at stagnation conditions. The ratio of the nozzle exit to the throat area is 11.91. So here's the throat, and here is the exit. So we're told the area of the exit to the area of the throat is 11.91. And then we're also told there's a normal shock wave standing where the upstream Mach number is 3.0. So some, let's say just it's occurring here. So we'll call this point one, so just upstream of the shock, and point two is just downstream. So the Mach number at one is 3.0. We're asked to calculate the Mach number, the static temperature, and static pressure at the nozzle exit plane. So one thing I know right away is since the Mach number is uh, supersonic here at point one, you know, since we have a, sh a shock wave, that means the flow goes from stagnation conditions, it's subsonic, and I know immediately that the Mach number at the throat has to be equal to one because we go from reservoir conditions, subsonic, sonic to supersonic conditions. So in order to go from reservoir to supersonic conditions, you have to pass through a Mach number of one and that'll occur at the throat. So this AE over area of the throat is also the area of the exit to A star, right? Because that, that area of the throat is now the sonic area because it's a Mach number of one there. Okay, so we're now um, trying to find the Mach number, static temperature, static pressure at the nozzle exit plane. Okay, so one of the first things I'm going to do is I, I, need, I know that I need to cross the shock wave. So to do that, to find the properties across the shock wave, I'm going to use the normal shock relations. So let me uh, do that here. So normal shock relations. So for example, to find the Mach number at 2, I know that that'll be a function of the Mach number at one, and uh, I don't. Uh, I'm not going to write out the formulas. These come from the normal shock relations that are in the um, formula sheet. They're derived in the notes. I'm just going to write it like this for simplicity here, so I don't have to write out the whole formula. Or you could use the the um, normal shock tables uh, that are given in the back of textbooks as well as on the formula sheet. So given a Mach number of one of um, Mach number one of 3.0, you can use the normal shock relations to get the Mach number two, and it comes out to be 0 0.4752, subsonic as we expect. So this is the Mach number right here. And you can get some other properties across the, the shock wave. First of all, you know that the stagnation temperature is gonna be equal to one. So the stagnation temperature at two is the same as the stagnation temperature at one. That's the one thing that remains constant across the shock wave. Well, that in the mass flow rate. And then uh, the other thing is the, the um, we can get the stagnation pressure ratio. That's also a function of the Mach number at one. So you can find P naught two over P naught one. P naught two is the stagnation pressure downstream of the shock. P naught one is the stagnation pressure upstream. So this stagnation pressure here, th this is P naught one. That's also T naught one. And we expect the stagnation pressure to decrease across the normal shock, and indeed it does. That comes out to be 0.3283. So just so you can see where these relations are coming from, for example, let's just remember Mach number of three. So if we go to our formula sheet, let me see if I can pull up the formula sheet quickly, and we go to the normal shock table. So here's the normal shock table for air, we're gonna to go to a Mach number of three, so that's, you can ignore this other stuff. Mach number of three right down here. So you can see the downstream, so, so it's uh, Mach number two, P naught two over P naught one in those columns. So 
Mach number two is 0.475, just what we had written down. And then the P naught two over P naught one is 0.3283, which is what we wrote down as well. And then, of course, there are other properties you could pull out, like P2 over P1, T2 over T1, Rho2 over Rho1. So th this is where we're getting this information. Either use that or these normal shock relations in formula form. Sorry for all the other stuff written on this screen. It can all be ignored. But um, you can also get that information from these normal shock relations. So here, for example, is the downstream Mach number, the downstream stagnation, uh, well, the, the stagnation pressure ratio, etc. Okay, so I think you get the idea. Let's go back to our example. Okay, so that's where we get this information from. Now, um, we can also uh, determine so let's see, we're trying to find the Mach number at the exit. So uh, to do that, I'm just I'm going to need to kind of march downstream from the uh, reservoir conditions to point one, and then use the normal shock relations to cross over, and then use the isentropic relations from point two to the exit. So let me figure out what's happening uh, at point one. Okay, so let's use our isentropic relations to find properties at point one. So for example, we could do the, um, let's say we want to find uh, P1 over P naught one. So we can find that using this isentropic relation, for example. We could also find uh, T1 over T naught one. From that relation, we know the stag stagnation properties. And in the reservoir here, we know the Mach number. So we can find P1. You can also find T1. I don't think I have the numbers for those written out, but you can find them, right? Similarly, we could go from point two to the exit using the isentropic relations. So pressure at the exit over P naught two. Now keep in mind that the stagnation pressure in this downstream part is different. So I'm using P naught two here. That would be the same kind of expression here. I'll let me do the same here. Now in writing this out, we don't know the Mach number at the exit yet. We still need to figure that out. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna figure that out. One other isentropic relation we're going to use, I'm gonna write it over here, is the sonic area, isentropic sonic area. So we're going to write out uh, A1 over A star one as a function of Mach number one. Okay, again, this comes from you can use the isentropic tables given on the formula sheet or uh, the isentropic relations. I, I'm not going to write out the full equation for this. Now, when I write this one out, this is, this one's uh, important because we can find A1 from this, right? We know Mach number at 1 is the 3.0. We know A star 1, that's this area here. I, let me put a subscript 1 here. The reason I'm putting the subscript one is because the sonic area changes as you go across the shock wave. The sonic area actually increases as you go across. So we could use this, for example, to find what the area at one is. Okay. Um, now, so I can find uh, conditions at point one, as we just talked about. Uh, I still need to cross over the shock wave. So uh, let me write down Let's find the um, the sonic area at two for a moment, okay? The reason I'm going to do that is because I'm given the the area of the exit to the area of the throat. I'm given that ratio, but I, for, the only other information that I have regarding the exit is just the area of the exit, okay? So I'm going to find the from the normal shock relations. 
a star 2 over a star 1. So that'll be a function of Mach number 1. Okay, you'd have to go again back to the normal shock tables, for example, to get that, that result. And then I can relate the area of the exit to a star 2 in the following way. So I can do area of the exit to a star 2. That'll be equal to the area of the exit all over a star 1 times area a star 1 over a star 2. Okay, this was given. This is the 11.91. This one we found right here. Okay, you just flip it upside down. So now we would have AE over A star 2. Okay, and I think if uh, that one I actually have the numbers for. If you work out the numbers for that, that comes out to be uh, 3.9094 when you actually work the numbers out for that. Okay, so we now have the area of the exit to A star 2, but from that we can also find the Mach number at the exit, right? Because we know that the area over A star is a function of the Mach number so for an isentropic flow. So we can also then get the Mach number at the exit from that expression. And what you'll find is the Mach number at the exit comes out to be 0.15. Now that we have the Mach number at the exit, now we can plug it back in up here to find these ratios. And then what I'll do for that is I'll just, uh, to find the pressure at the exit, we'll do some rearranging. So the pressure at the exit would be PE over P naught 2, which I now know because I can use this expression now that I have the Mach number at the exit. I'm going to multiply that by P naught 2 over P naught 1 which I get from the normal shock relations. I have that right up here. And then I also have um, P naught one, right? So I'll multiply it by P naught one. So if you look at this, you'll get, you know, P, the P naught twos cancel out, the P naught ones cancel out, and I'm left with PE, right? So the P naught one was just given right here. So you can do that, those calculations, and the pressure at the exit comes out to be 226 kilopascals absolute. We can do a similar approach to finding the temperature at the exit. The temperature at the exit would be Te over T naught 2, which we found from right up here. Multiply that by T naught 2 over T naught 1. That's just equal to 1 because the stagnation temperature remains constant across shockwave. And then multiply it by T naught 1, which we're given is 500 Kelvin. So again, you see the T01s cancel out, the T02s cancel out, and you're left with temperature, temperature at the exit, and that comes out to be 498 Kelvin when you plug in the numbers. So I think we calculated everything we need, right? We're trying to find the Mach number, static temperature, static pressure at the nozzle exit plane. So we, we did calculate all of these. So just to kind of remind you what we've done here, and by the way, there are different ways you can do this. Um, but essentially what we're doing is patching together solutions. We're taking some isentropic flow relations to go from the stagnation conditions to point one. So you can see I did that here. And I also used the isentropic relations here relating to A star one. So I found the conditions at one, you know, using isentropic relations. Then I used normal shock relations to cross the shock wave. So that's given up here as well as here. And then from two to the exit, I use the uh, isentropic relations again. So that's given here, as well as uh, here, this, this portion for AE over A star two to get to the Mach number at the exit. And then, uh, so I, I basically am just patching this together. Isentropic, normal shock, isentropic, and then it's a matter of just combining some ratios together to get the exit pressure and uh, exit temperature. So I know I didn't write a, a bunch of numbers here or the, the full formulas, but hopefully you get the idea that it's just a combination of isentropic relations and normal shock relations combined together. Let's see, there are a few other items that we needed along the way. Number one is just recognizing the area of the throat was A star 1. 
That's because we went from subsonic to supersonic condition, so we know the throat has to be sonic condition, so that gave us that expression. Uh, I guess another one that we used, I didn't really talk about it, is going from this expression, AE over A star 2, to the Mach number. When you do that, you actually get two Mach numbers that could that could be valid here. We chose the subsonic one. So when you get the two Mach numbers, one will be supersonic, one will be subsonic. And I know it's the subsonic one that I care about because once you go through that shock wave, the flow is subsonic. So that's another thing that I did in this analysis. Uh, the last thing I'll do before we finish is let me draw a TS diagram for this whole process. These are good for just visualizing What's going on so here's our stagnation temperature so t naught 2 and t naught 1 are the same here's our stagnation pressure that we're starting with p naught 1 that's the pressure right up in here and so we start from um, those stagnation conditions and we go isentropically through the throat to state one so the throat will be somewhere here so this is t star it's t star one really it's the the sonic temperature upstream of the shock so that would be P star there. The pressure there would be P star 1. So we go from stagnation conditions to the throat. Then we go to state 1, which is here. And so that has a little lower temperature. So this is T1. And here is the pressure there, P1. And then we go through our shock wave. And as we go through the shock wave, the pressure increases and the temperature increases. So I'll just draw that uh, here. So here's, let's call this T2, and then here's our P2. Sorry, let, let me draw that in a different color so because it, it's getting kind of mixed up. So here's P2, here's T2. I, I'm not quite sure where it is relative to T star 1. I'm just assuming it's lower. I'd have to run the numbers to know for sure. But I know, what I do know is that the temperature across the shock increases and I know that the pressure across the shock increases. So here's P1, it's a little bit less than P2. I also know that the entropy increases across the shock wave. So we, and, and I'll draw that process as occurring using a squiggly line because it's, a, it's across the shock wave, it happens instantaneously. And then to go from P2 to the exit, the flow is subsonic with an increasing area. So what ends up happening is the pressure increases. So that means what we're, we'll be doing is we're moving up this way. And I'll just draw it here. Here's the pressure at the exit. So here's the exit point. And so then this would be the exit temperature. And uh, here is the exit, I mean, the, the P naught two, that's our stagnation pressure downstream of the shock. Still the same stagnation temperature, but you can see the stagnation pressure is less than P naught one. So that's the process. It goes isentropically up until you hit the shock, then the entropy increases, then it goes isentropically to the exit, and it's headed back up because I know the pressure is increasing. PE is greater than P2 because it's subsonic in a diverging area. So the velocity is going down, and from Bernoulli's equation, the pressure goes up. Okay, I think that covers everything that we need to do on the example. Hopefully it, it's making sense. We'll go ahead and end it there.